Welcome back to class. Just kidding. But this is the Ream Prestige line, or Prestige Series Rotera hybrid hot water heater. A little bit of a mouthful there. And basically, the top portion here is a heat pump. And that's sitting on top of a regular electric water heater. Now, they come as a pair. It's not like you can add this to just any water heater. Um, but that's essentially what it is. So, this one was installed January 28th, 23. It's not that long ago. Um, the nice thing about these is, is you can choose to run them as just a regular electric water heater. So, if the hybrid part has an issue, you still have hot water. You could run it as just a hybrid, so if the electric elements fail, you still have hot water. And also, you can uh, run it as both. So they have the energy saver mode, which is the uses the electric elements and the hybrid together, and the water heater decides what to use when and where. So as far as I understand it, when there's not enough electric wa um, hot water being produced by the hybrid aspect of it or the heat pump, that it will kick in the electric elements. And you can also use it in just heat pump mode, but the recovery is you know, not nearly as fast. So this one here, um, customers originally started running it with the energy saver mode. And the energy saver mode you know, is the mode where you're using the electric elements under those covers in conjunction with the heat pump. And then started using it a couple weeks later as just straight heat pump. And they haven't had any issues having enough hot water, and there's five people in the house. And this is a 50 gallon, by the way. Um, here's the model number for you. So, in any case, so this one, these are just about. 400% uh, efficient when you do the math. So according to this, this one will cost you $117 a year. Uh, and that is based on 14 cents per kilowatt. Which is right there. Uh, estimated yearly energy use is 837 kilowatt hours. So they don't really say exactly um, how much, for example, this is uh, for is this for two people? You know, is this for four people? So I'm not really sure on that, but it's 837 kilowatt hours, 117 dollars a year. So that's on that. Um, I'm gonna go over to the other water heater. This one was relocated because basically the bathrooms. Our, both bathrooms are right above this. Showers and everything are almost directly above. In fact, that's the piping for the toilet and the sink drain and the shower right over there. So it's just on the other side of this wall. So I'm gonna go around to the other side and uh, the old water heater hasn't been taken out yet. And uh, it's actually still could be used if it was filled and turned on, but it was replaced because the base started leaking, but it was relocated because it was much further away. So I'll bring you guys over there next. Okay, here's the old Kenmore Power Miser. That, I mean, that one last was installed in 2011. So, you know, just about 12 years old, almost. A month shy of 12 years old before it started leaking. But uh, it was leaking out of the bottom seam. So by comparison, this electric water heater, 492 per year. Now that is based on... 10, 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And this one, oh, estimated, estimated yearly energy use, 46.22. So, you know, if we do the math on the actual comparison with the same, you know, cost per kilowatt, now keep in mind, this is at 10 cents, the other one's at 14. So that is gonna end up being a big difference with these values. So I'll probably have to do the math and I'll put it in the video just to get a direct comparison. So, now I'm gonna go back to the other one. Okay, now that we're back at the other one, it's the other side of the basement, uh, this water heater's probably moved about 
pipe length wise, at least 30 feet closer. Might be closer to 35 feet. It, it's certainly a big difference. And it, it basically, we did a testing before and after just with a thermometer coming out of the sink as to how long it took uh, the hot water to reach like 100 degrees, 120 degrees, and then the maximum temperature, which was on the old one, just above 120 degrees. It was like 126, so that one ended up getting a little higher, probably because the mixing valve got tired over, you know, 11, 12 years. But it was originally set at 120, and it just about halved the time, if not a little bit more. So it takes half the time now to get hot water to the faucets and um, all the different kinds of faucets and the uh, shower and everything. So that kind of made a big difference just moving it there. So that's an energy savings if you think about the fact that the well pump doesn't have to pump as much water just to get the, the hot water up there just for simply washing hands. Um, so there's a savings there. The amount of hot water in the line after you get hot water to the faucet is going to sit there with the faucet shut off. That's kind of a waste. So, you know, there was a lot of savings in that aspect alone overall. So getting back to the features of this water heater, there's a filter here that just slides up and you just kind of clean it similar to a ductless, ductless filter. You can wash it but make sure it's totally dry or you can, um, you can vacuum it gently. Um, some of the features, so one thing they do recommend, and I'm going to pull off a little bit of this insulation to show you. Oh yeah, the light's not too bright. So see these sections of PEX here and here? Uh, this one's about 18 inches, that one's about 12. And the reason for that is there's a, a natural vibration, or it could hit a resonant frequency, but basically you could have vibration in your household pipes if you don't separate it. Now, I know there's no way I'm gonna be able to ever show you this in the video, but at certain times, not so much right now because it's running pretty smooth, but this can run at different RPMs. And sometimes you hit that resonant frequency where I've had some pretty good noticeable vibration here, where my hand is. And then you put it at the other end of the same line and you don't feel hardly anything. So I thought it was a little interesting when I was watching uh, the install videos and checking the documentation from Ream which I don't believe it was in the documentation, but in the install videos from Ream, they were saying to do that. So we did that and it, uh, it didn't make a difference. So that was, uh, it's probably saved some irritating noise upstairs now. There is a bit of a hum to this thing and I'm sure the phone is probably picking it up much worse than it actually is in the room I'm in with it. So it's really not that bad. So that was one thing you should definitely do when you install one of these. All the hot water lines, I do, um, want to see, I'd like to see if manufacturers would come out with a insulating boot for these mixing valves. Just, you know, instead of wasting the heat into the air, that'd be kind of cool if they made something that just popped around that. But uh, I'm not aware if they are, nor have I really looked into it too much. But, so in this case, you know, vacuum relief, water comes in, vacuum relief down there, water comes in, shut off, goes down, and goes in this guy down here is a shutoff valve. So if this unit senses water in the base of its own pan or in the pan that is sitting in the aluminum pan, it will shut off water and then, and then the water feed splits at the T here to feed part of the mixing valve. So we run the tank at 140 degrees. And so that comes out of here at 140, goes into the mixing valve, gets dulled down from 140 to 120 and then out up into the home to the faucets. So the reason we do that is because there's certain things that can grow in the water at 120. So if you have a tank of water just sitting there and things grow in there, it can cause health issues. So with those health issues, you can mitigate that by running the tank at 140 and dulling it down to 120 at the mixing valve. It's code and it's also a good idea. But the nice thing on top of that is it's a 50 gallon water heater. and when you add a mixing valve, you get equivalent to a 60 gallon water heater. On a 40 gallon water heater, you get equivalent to 48 gallons because it's mixing in that cold with the water that's too hot to be used without people getting burned. So you're expanding your capacity. And the other nice thing is this effectively gives a 60 gallon water heater. So it gives more time for the hybrid aspect to catch up. So somebody takes a shower, 
there's more water to begin with, and this has more time before some of you will run out to catch up with just the heat pump side of it. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, hot water outlet shut off, and then all the piping on the hot side is insulated. So, I believe that's most of the aspects I wanted to cover on this water heater. Um, and the app is pretty great. It, it's kind of a simple app. There's, there's not too much you really have to do with Wi-Fi with a water heater. I mean, you can change the modes it runs in the energy saver, heat pump, those different modes, uh, those different modes. And I'll see, you know, you can change the temperature. You can just turn it on or off and it will send you alerts if there are any. You can also check the amount of hot water you have. It's just kind of a green bar graph that goes up and down. But it is pretty neat to look at and be able to change the modes, but just be able to know that, oh, having a, a water issue, you know, would be pretty great to know. So, uh, this water heater's been flawless. Uh, it's been in for almost two months. I mean, it's getting close to that date. Because today is, what, March, March 16th, so it's not that far. Maybe a month and a half or so, a little over that. But, yeah, so it's the review, overview, if you will, the Hybrid Hot Water Heater. Uh, there is an option at the top if you wanted to duct the air and that is the adapter that they sell you that they make and it screws down there and you can use that I can feel the air going through pretty well you can use that if you wanted to pipe this to an outside source um, that's probably something that's going to be more useful to people in the southern half of the country because below 38 degrees, this will not use the heat pump because it doesn't want to cause freezing uh, if, you know, being in your basement. So if it gets too cold outside, it it will just run the elements. Um, so in this case, the plan, because there's a wood shop down here and we're going to try to create a circulation effect. So we're going to put a 90 on here and put it through that part of the wall, which will go to the other side of the basement and of course close in that hole there and create like a circulation effect from one side of the basement to the other. So that'll pull air from the other side away from the wood shop. So when the wood shop's running, it's not sucking in dust from it. It'll have, the dust would have to travel all the way around the basement to the other side of this wall. So once that's ducted in this hole and a couple of the holes you've probably seen in the drywall for access have been kind of blocked, um, that will kind of solve that problem and make a much longer path for the dust to travel to get into the water heater. So that's kind of the plan for that. So that's it. I believe if you have any questions, you know, just, just ask. And uh, you can like and subscribe. It, it does help us keep making content for the channel and help the people. So other than that, I hope you have a great day. All right, so here's some usage numbers I was able to get. The straight electric cut water heater according to the yellow tag the, the uh, energy guide tag uses 4622 per kilowatt hours per year and the hybrid says 837 now i looked it up and on those tags is on the energy guide tags on the water heaters that is water coming in at 58 degrees being heated to 135 and a total hot water production of 64.3 gallons per day. That is the average usage for a household size of three people. So, and all these numbers with the actual usage that's based on the five people in this household that I'm referring to. So hybrids 837 per year, the straight electrics 4622 with, you know, the 63.4 gallons per year, um, per day, sorry, per hour per year. So, at using the 14 cents for both kilowatt hours, the straight hybrid is supposed to be $117 for that price. The um, straight electric would be 646. So at 14 cents, you'd be paying $529 more to run the regular electric water heater versus the hybrid hot water heater. Now, the current rate uh, in New Hampshire for Eversource is 20 cents. So the, with the adjustments for using those numbers at 20 cents, it would cost $168 per year 
to run the hybrid, but 924 to run the straight water heater, the electric straight water heater, which is $756 more at 20 cents. So the uh, for the month of February, this water heater, thanks to the Wi-Fi app, used the hybrid hot water heater, used 99 kilowatt hours in the month. Now, unlike heating and cooling, that usage is going to be probably pretty standard throughout the year. So times 12 months, that's 1188 per year of kilowatt hours, meaning that's going to cost $238 per year. And that's at 20 cents. Now, using that usage numbers and figuring out what the electric water heater would, would cost would be $1,313. So in this case, with five people in this house, the savings actually is going to end up being $1,075 per year. So if you pay, uh, just say for easy numbers, $4,000 for, for a full install, and that's that's everything, uh, you know, you'd be paid back in four years. And that doesn't account for any re local rebates. In New Hampshire right now, there's a $750 rebate. So it's more like three and a quarter years, and this water heater will pay for itself. And then after that, you're saving 1075 year after year after year after year, as opposed to running electric water heater. So as far as usage goes, it's, it's definitely a saver for the home. Yeah, I don't know about anybody else, but 1075 back in your pocket per year for getting exactly what you'd be getting from the other device, meaning hot water for both. It's not like one gives you better hot water or tastier hot water or healthier hot water. It's hot water. So with that being said, there is quite a bit of savings with this hybrid hot water heater. So uh, in the future, I'll try to get more statistics and uh, maybe be able to put out another video a year or two from now that would have that that information over a longer period of time so other than that that's it have a good one